Hi, everybody. This is Stephen Rosell, Product Manager at Autodesk on the Maya team, and I'm going to cover the latest modeling updates that we've added to Maya 2020, and specifically, we're going to talk about the new retopology workflow that we've introduced. Now, again, this is new to Maya, and essentially, it's broken down into two pieces. We have two different features now in Maya, which can be used independently, but they're actually also can be used in tandem. The first is something called Remesh, and what Remesh does is it basically allows you to take an arbitrary piece of geometry, say so an object that's been Boolean and has really kind of ugly topology, and remesh that into a nice evenly distributed series of triangles, so a nice clean triangulated surface. And then another feature which allows you to clean that up, so you can clean up the kind of uniform triangulated mesh into a nice clean quad mesh, uh, and then that allows you to create nice smooth edge flow, a nice clean topology, but also preserve the surface details at the same time. And there are lots of options that you can use to set the target face count if you want a thousand faces or 2,000 faces or whatever it may be. And then you can use things like hard edges to go in and define surface details that you want to preserve. So if you want to preserve like a symmetry line, you can actually use a hard edge to do that. Now, I'm going to talk about a few different workflows that this opens up. Now, one is the obvious one that I just showed, which is essentially you know, mechanical or kind of uh, hard surface modeling. So these are just some objects that I built just to demonstrate uh, how we can take something that was a Boolean, essentially, a Boolean of multiple shapes. So taking cubes and cylinders and, and toruses and cones and spheres and, and capsules and merging them all together into a single unified mesh, which gives you really ugly topology, as a lot of you probably know. If I triangulated these top meshes, they would look really ugly. But at the bottom, I've got the retopologized version. And you can see I've got the nice, clean, even distribution with nice edge flow across this. But at the same time, I've preserved the shape. They look exactly the same. Uh, they just have a nice clean topology. So this is particularly important when you're dealing with things like UV editing, if you wanted to create UV shells and, and unfold those, and also things like deformation, of course. If I wanted to deform these, then they, I have to have clean topology, but also just for continued modeling. If you wanted to you know, extend the, the mesh in some way, it's easier to do it when you have clean topology. It also opens up additional workflows. So of course, there's the kind of lower level mechanical you know, hard surface uh, workflow, but uh, another workflow that, that this opens up is uh, a similar workflow, but with organic shapes. Um, so whether that be for creatures or characters, this is a, an example created by one of our beta users, Andrew Silk. He was very active on the, the beta forums, and he provided us this example of a workflow uh, using this Boolean, uh, these Boolean features. So the idea is that you would take a series of primitive objects. So here we've just got simple objects that have been roughed out to create the base form. Those are then booleaned into a simple shape. So what we have is one piece of geometry and, and all the interior uh, faces have been removed. And then we run remesh to create a nice uniform topology on top of that. And then just do a base sculpt using Maya standard sculpting tools to go in and kind of refine the shape and create the, the basic form. And then ultimately run retopology on that to create nice clean edge flow. And you might need to mirror the mesh to make sure it's symmetrical and whatnot. But then you continue to sculpt and continue to add detail and continue to refine the mesh until you get something that looks like this. And the end result does look quite, quite nice, very impressive model. And here you can see the, the full progression. Again, just starting with a very, very simple form of primitive objects all the way to a, a pretty highly sculpted, nice looking end result for a character. Now this also opens workflows for doing things like retopology of scan data and photogrammetry. So this could be scan data uh, that's brought in you know, through, through various uh, techniques. I'm gonna go over a photogrammetry workflow. So what I did is I went in and I, I, I did this one myself. I took a picture of a, my child's toy, which is this giraffe. It's probably about, uh, I'd say about six, seven inches tall. I ran that through Recap Photo. I did a base cleanup. I remeshed, retopoed, and did a little bit of quad draw, and he ended up with what we see on the right. So I'll show this workflow. Again, it starts with simple photos. So uh, for those of you that don't know, photo, uh, Recap Photo is part of the collection. So if you subscribe to not only Maya, but the m and &E collection, and you get Recap Photo as part of that. And with Recap Photo, uh, you can basically upload or, or add a series of images. 
uh, that would then kind of visually describe a 3D mesh. And then it's got a bunch of cleanup tools where you can go in and create planes for the ground. And you can go in and use cut tools to get rid of artifact geometry. And then you can kind of do smoothing on that to get rid of uh, distortion in the shape from the result of a cut. And you can fill holes and things like that. And then ultimately you export that out as FBX. You load that right into Maya through the FBX importer. And there's your mesh. Now it looks pretty good until you select it and then you realize it's pretty gnarly triangle soup. So you can use you know standard cleanup tools to go in and get rid of non-manifold geometry, get rid of laminate faces, get rid of uh, zero ink ledges, uh, edges rather, uh, coincident vertices, base level of cleanup. Uh, and then just to make sure retopology works efficiently, run a remesh on that to redistribute the triangles uh, on that mesh. So now I've got a cleaner distribution, even uniform distribution of triangles for which I can then retopologize. So I'm using retopologize here and just right off the bat, I get a pretty nice looking result. If you take a look at that topology, it actually looks pretty good, but it might not be perfect. So what you can do is you can use this in conjunction with an automated or rather a manual process. So you can take the source mesh, the triangle mesh, make that a live object, and then simply select your retopode, auto retopode mesh, and use quad draw to rearrange the topology manually. So you can basically just go in and clean up areas that you know you might want to uh, refine a little bit. So I might want to change the edge flow, I might want to change the location of certain triangles, you know, have, might have a triangle here and there. Uh, I might want to go in and you know smooth out the the distribution, so you've got smoothing functionality built into this. I can go in and kind of change the distribution of the, the quads and basically end up with a cleaner version of the retopologized mesh. Now you can see here that I have lost the textures along the way, but all I have to do is just simply transfer the textures over using uh, transfer UVs uh, or transfer attribute rather with a UV option. And now I've got the UVs and the texture transferred from the original photogrammetry data onto the target uh, quad mesh. Now, this is actually a nice clean mesh that technically I could go in and build a rig for this and I can animate this um, because it is a nice clean topology. It's deformable and so on. Now, of course, this is really useful for character workflow, but also just general scan data workflow. But it could also be used for things like motion graphics or you know, other types of uh, graphic workflow. So, so here I've got the Illustrator graphic was built as a vector art in Illustrator. Save that out as an SVG. Bring that into Maya through the SVG node uh, and then simply extrude that. So I'm just going to go in and create a base extrusion. Might want to change the depth, might want to change a few you know, simple parameters. But then when I'm ready, I can basically take that now and I can run the remesh on it and the remesh will basically go in and, and uh, create uniform triangles, but I might want to use hard edges though to define first certain areas of the shape. So here I'm going in, I'm defining certain areas as hard edges, which will basically tell the, the algorithm to preserve those edges or those details. So again, now I run remesh and I just change the max length settings just to tweak the resolution a little bit, make that you know visually the way I want it, and then run retopologize. And what you'll see is I get a nice clean topology pretty quickly. And here I've got the edge flow following the contours of the surface, as you would expect had I manually built this. This is kind of how I, I would have built it if I'd done it manually. Now I can go in and I can change the target face count. And I've got a few other parameters that allow me to control things like face uniformity and regularity and whatnot. But you also notice that it preserved the hard edges. Um, so that preserved the general profile of the object. And now that it's this nice uniform quad mesh, I can texture it really easily, I can form it, I can continue to model on top of it, um, do things like beveling. Beveling is going to be much easier now that I have these nice clean quads. Also things like LODs. So creating LODs is another example. If I wanted to create high resolution, low resolution, mid resolution of an object, I can use the same workflow for doing that.